Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced. I'm going to post this episode on three of my podcasts just because I think it's... I'm going to basically cross three different bridges. So again, I have three different podcasts. You should subscribe to all of them on iTunes and Spotify, which is one, Thinking and Feeling Libertarian. So that's one where I talk a little bit more specifically about politics um, and probably ex- you know, express my political opinion a little bit more, a little bit more forcefully, but of course, always with a gentle care and attempt at understanding. Um, then there is the opinions of Alex Merced, which are not, which is a podcast that is not limited to politics. It's just generally my thoughts on anything. Um, and then there's economics and finance for noobs, where I specifically talk about economic concepts and explain them. Um, this particular episode is going to sort of cross the veil of all three, where I'll express certain thoughts that come from, from more of a libertarian framework. I'll explain some thoughts that are more purely economic thinking and breaking down in nature and three that are just some thoughts that don't fit into either bucket that are just sort of thoughts that go through my head and what i'm reflecting on today is that donald trump made uh, apparently some uh, basically put out some feelers about the concept of an all tariff revenue system okay and you know generally like from an economic and libertarian standpoint, standpoint this is generally tariffs are looked at as a, as a bad thing. Um, and I'm going to get a little bit into the nuance of tariffs. But the idea being that, hey, you're putting a cost on people getting goods from another country. And generally, if a government taxes anything, it's going to increase consumer costs. If I tax foreign goods, foreign goods are going to be more expensive. If I tax a particular industry, goods from that industry are going to be more expensive. If I tax people in general, that's going to trickle down at the cost of things. Because people are going to naturally want to recoup their expenses. Same thing with like finance, you tax gains, people are going to take on more risks to get more gains, okay, and then you end up with a much more riskier capital market. Um, you know, people don't just often take a cost on the chin, sometimes they do, that has to do with the elasticity, so like, hey, you know, if I'm if I'm a candy salesperson, chances are I'm not going to be able to just price that in, just because people can just stop buying the candy, But if I'm selling insulin, I can probably price it all in because people have to buy insulin. Um, So they'll pay whatever price I charge, as long as I can justify it based on, you know, what other laws might be in place. But I'm going to recoup my costs. So so oftentimes, as a a libertarian, I generally am uh, skeptical and discouraging of taxation in general. So in general, like, it's just like, hey, just arbitrarily taking money from people, it's always going to have consequences and there because it's arbitrary and enforced or and or coerced uh there really isn't the mechanism to know hey is this particular transaction accomplishing a net value positive wise like you can measure things but it's just like for example when you have a voluntary transaction i exchange with somebody i know at least that in the entering of the transaction, I perceive that I would be better off and they perceive that they would be better off and that's why we both consented to it. So this is immediate feedback mechanism that everyone kind of thinks at least they'll be better off. Again, there's a chance like, hey, you buy a lottery ticket, you might not be better off, but at least you entered the transaction thinking that. Okay? And that's that definitely is a level of feedback. Okay? Um, cool. Now, going to... But... At the end of the day, governments, whether you think they should exist or not, that's not what I'm going to get into in this conversation, but assuming a government exists, it does have to fund itself. Um, And how something makes money introduces its incentives, or at least a good chunk of its incentives. So So basically when a government taxes income, while there are lots of problems with the effect of taxing people for their income, there does create some interesting incentives for government to say, hey, okay, well, we make money when people make more money. So theoretically, on an optimistic sense, you'd be like, oh, okay, well, this is going to incentivize the government to invest in things like education and and things that are going to result in people having, like, a higher earning potential in their lives because that means more income tax. Um, More tradition, more often than not, just generally what happens is there might be some attempt at that. Like, you oftentimes have sort of, like, well-meaning progressives try to kind of go down that road. Oftentimes, again, politics is politics, so generally you don't, you try to put something forward, uh, you get a bastardized, corrupted version of it, so typically you don't sort of get what they want, it doesn't quite have the effect that they want, so you end up just kind of increasing spending and increasing people's incomes through inflation, for the most part, 
you know, um, with very marginal benefits, if any. Um, but that theoretically, you know, that could be a very virtuous thing saying, hey, you know, if governments make more money, if people make more money, they have an, basically they have an incentive to invest in people. OK, now. I, I don't hate the idea of tariffs as a revenue source. Um, bear with me for a moment when you think about it from a purely economic incentive. And again, there's different types of tariffs. I'm going to get into the nuances of that. Um, but basically, let's say government was funded purely by tariffs. Well, then for them to raise more revenue, what do they need to do? More trade. And this promotes generally more peace with the countries because you're, they're not going to be a trading partner if you're at war with them. Um, so basically, it does encourage more diplomacy and more trade, which are generally good things for people. But again, it depends how you set those tariffs. Okay, If you sit there and say, hey, we're going to set tariffs so high that we discourage trade. So again, there's protectionist tariffs where tariffs are so high that it really does heavily discourage trading. And then there's revenue tariffs where they're, you know, you're, you're taxing, you're taxing, but you really do still want people to do the trade. You just want your, your VIG on the trade. Okay. And this is where I'm not 100% sure with where like a Trump would be. I mean, he wants to replace the current level of revenue with a tariff. I don't know if the current budget, is there, if there's a tariff that could raise that revenue, because you could theoretically come up with a number probably, but probably in practice, that number will be so high that it would discourage trade. It would end up being a protectionist tariff and you just end up without the revenue in a worse economy. Um, so I don't think with the current government budget in the US, that's a practical solution. Um, but theoretically, I don't want to like necessarily just poo poo the concept of, hey, like, hey, if government was purely funded by tariffs, what kind of incentives would it have in that sort of thought exercise? Okay, and then again, you can't, I mean, you could inflate that to an extent, like, you know, but again, at the end of the day, like, it depends how, again, it also depends on the details. Like, to me, in an ideal world, you'd have a uniform tariff on imports and exports, like, let's say 10% goods going in or out. This way, there's not a incentive to encourage either side of the transaction. You know, you just let trade balance naturally because you're getting the same level of revenue either way. If there's more imports, you collect more revenue. If there's more exports, you collect more revenue. Um, now, I would imagine someone like a Donald Trump who does has, has expressed plenty of protectionist type vibes. I would imagine he would probably want to do something where there's very little taxes on exports and very heavy taxes on imports. Okay. And this creates a weird conundrum because you're trying, you basically you price it in a way that it discourages imports, but you're driving most of your revenue from imports. So it creates like an, over time what it does, it creates actually a, a, a re, it reinforces an incentive for the government to kind of create a, a, a deficit because it's going to want to generate more revenue. And, and eventually you'll have regimes that are going to really want to increase imports to increase that revenue. Um, on top of it, the effect that it probably wouldn't cover today's budget. So anyone thinking that today's budget is practical, um, you know, you're going to end up having, I mean, with all the myriad of taxes we have today, it's, it's not fundable. And, you know, that deficit actually has real implications. When the government's borrowing, it doesn't just borrow from a, you know, infinite pool of funds. Yes, the Fed can monetize money, but it's not necessarily changing the amount of sort of physical goods, physical labor that's available in the economy. So it does kind of create a tension where basically you're giving the government an outsized ability to pull from that sort of stash of stuff, uh, thus limiting the ability of others to pull from that stash of stuff that exists. You know, if you were to imagine like everything that's available to be exchanged sort of in one big pile, if I were to print dollars, essentially grow the money supply and give it to the government, they're going to be able to grab more than they otherwise would have, which means other people are going to grow and grab less. Now, again, it's not a zero sum game because, again, there's differences in like, hey, what happens? Like, hey, if A transacts with Y, which transacts with C, and that results in a grander productive capacity, you could be growing the pile faster than you whittle the pile. Okay, that's, that's generally what that's what a good economy looks like. You you produce faster than you consume. Okay, so in that case, you're able to support increased consumption because you are you have increased production. 
Okay, I mean, people can't eat air. Um, so these are the kind of things that I kind of go through my head with this policy. Generally, again, I'm always going to gravitate towards free market to the extent that there is taxation. It should be simple, fair, and equal in the sense of, again, with tariffs, it should be on goods going in and out, and it should be small. You know, when it comes to in income, I'm generally going to prefer flatter tax rates. You know, if you need to make it some progressivity, then, you know, you figure out some sort of generous standard deduction instead of the sort of itemized deduction world where everyone's trying to game the tax system by getting their favorite thing deducted, you know. I'm gonna a better tax system is a simpler tax system. A better amount of taxation is less taxation. That's generally gonna be sort of my true north. Again, it's not there's other things to consider, okay? Sort of like, hey, what is currently being funded? What are the implications if it doesn't get funded? These are things that definitely aren't necessarily not worth thinking about, not worth having being thoughtful about, but generally like if I want there to be sort of less corruption, I'm going to want a simpler system. And if I want less resources to, if I want more resources to be available to so to the general population, I'm generally going to want, again, less taxation. Um, in, and again, I mean that sort of in the most general way I can. Uh, but yeah, my name is Alex Merced. And hopefully you guys enjoy this podcast. If not, you probably didn't make it this far. If you did, subscribe to all three of the podcasts. That's again, the opinions of Alex Merced, um, thinking and feeling libertarian, and um, economics for noobs. And noobs is spelled with two zeros. So subscribe, listen, I'll see y'all later.